you want to talk about looking ahead? And I, like I said, my heart, I'm a baseball guy. I played it and allegedly played it uh, when I was a kid. Marky Bilson, Tri-City Sports Now. The uh, station is, of course, 1420 WEMB Sports Radio, which you can also listen to at www.jetbroadcasting.live or like us on Facebook. Because you like us on Facebook, we're about ready to go to 1,500 Facebook likes. We've got that many followers. We're about that, I think it was 10 shy of that this morning. Okay. You like us, first of all, we're giving away four free Dollywood tickets in four days. We're going to have a drawing. Still plenty of opportunity. Your odds are still going to be real good to win those four tickets to go to Dollywood. And here's what I like. I used to always say, we've got the best prizes here as well as the best guests and the hardest hitting opinions on Tri-City Sports Now. But here's the situation. You take a look at what we're doing here, and we're giving away four free Dollywood tickets. I know we've got a competitor out there. Okay, yeah, we've got a competitor. He's giving away two. Now you think about that. I'm, I'm letting you take your whole family down there. He's like, hey, it's a it's a date with some gas being burned up. I want you to take the everybody. And, you know, I'm not Mr. Family Friendly. By that I mean, a lot of times, they, well, we're out there for families. No, nothing wrong with that. It's just that I'm a single guy. I kind of like some action, you know, and all that. I mean, I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, trip to Dollywood. Great. Yeah, ride to roller coasters. That sounds fantastic. Trip to Vegas. Yeah, that sounds pretty good, too, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? That's the point that I'm making here. So that people say, family-friendly and all this. I Look, nothing against family-friendly. We need it, you know? But there's also nothing wrong with, you know, like I said, a little bit of action either. And time to time, you know, both have their place. Anyway, uh, but I am being family-friendly. I am giving away four tickets for your entire family. Or, if you are like me, and you were raised, only a child raised by a single parent, time to be a hero, and you bring your friends along. All you gotta do is like us on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio's Facebook page. After you do that, then you'll be able to like us on, uh, you'll be able to tell us what your favorite sports moment is. Tell us what your favorite sports moment is. You'll see it's at the top of the page. And you will then be in line to win. And this is only on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio where we're giving away the four tickets and such. Asian House is open again. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. You heard the ad. Asian House giving the best Chinese, Japanese food in the market. They're in Johnson City. Shops on West Market like you're driving to Jonesboro. Go there for their Happy Box meal. Get 10% off for naming Marky Bilson. They're reopening today. They have that lunch menu. Nothing. Check it out. GoAsianHouse.com and get 10% off for mentioning my name. You know, yesterday I really bashed uh, the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. I, you know, and I'm hearing a lot of that too. It's like, you know... This has really gotten to be about slobs. I think that somehow, uh, you know, the uh, dog bone gods and all this. My grandfather used to talk, tell me about a by now archaic comic strip called Dog Bone. And it was, there was a character, I have no idea what his name was, but that he walked around all day and he had a storm cloud over him. You know, everything was going bad for him. He, could, he was the leading example of Murphy's Law, which, by the way, I'm not that far removed from. And so I want to watch Braves Phillies. I mean, I'm excited to watch Braves Phillies on the 4th of July. And if I had known it had been blacked out, it was in the listings. I go to an Appalachian League game. On top of that, then, what happens? Then I have to read... And what do they put on? Because it is black that they rerun the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. I mean, somebody was against me up there. 
you know, somebody, uh, da somebody up there doesn't like me, that sort of thing. Anyway, you know, this is Peter King and came out and basically said, in a lot of ways, what I said, which is a hot dog eating. Now, he came up with this whole, you know, one in every five children in the country sob story goes to bed hungry, and that's not true, but uh, nevertheless, it did shed light that this is really boorish behavior, competitive eating. And, you know, if you're not following me, Marky Bilson, on Medium, do so now, because you can read the brilliant columns that I begin this show with. And the other thing is that I make radio visual not only by putting this show on Facebook Live, or you can actually see it on my YouTube channel, Marky Bilson, uh, some of the select archives. By the way, we put up all the Drew Rice shows from our high school footballs uh, broadcast. We put them all up on YouTube. So more on that here in just a, later on in the show in the next hour. But uh, what we did is you can read and you can really see how disgusting the Nathan's hot dog eating contest really is. Not that going to Nathan's or having a hot dog or whatever, but I mean, really, and Peter King picked up on this. And he went off on the documentary that ESPN, that is the most self-serving thing. You want to talk about why ESPN fails. And ESPN does do this, and I've mentioned this many times. We're going to have, we, we already are having basketball shoved down our throat. We're going to have basketball shoved down our throat for years. Because their contract, they pay more for it than the NFL, and it lasts until 2025. So that's why we watch the Summer League starting Sports Center instead of Major League Baseball. And that's why I can't watch SportsCenter. I, I cannot watch ESPN anymore, unless there's like a game on or something like that. Anyway, Joey Chestnut, who I understand is the greatest competitive eater of the Nathan's Hot I understand he is the Michael Jordan of competitive eating. In hot dogs. What a distinction. Six foot one, 230 pounds. That's what he is listed as. And he responded to Peter King, he's a football writer, if you didn't know, a criticism of the hot dog eating contest, which he called truly disgusting and said, this is what Chestnut said to TMZ. Not the local sports section. Not Tri-City Sports Now, not Fox Sports, to TMZ. I'm an athlete. I think Peter King, he's kind of narrow-minded. He's picking low-minded fruit. It's easy to criticize. You're not an athlete. You eat. Artie Donovan was an athlete, not because he could probably out-eat you, and he used to joke that he did, but because he played defensive lineman for the Baltimore Colts and was good at it. You cannot play defensive line for the Indianapolis Colts, Chestnut. You go to lunch. That's what you do. And I'm not big on this, he's not an athlete. I'm not big on this, race car drivers aren't athletes. I'm not big on this, chess players aren't athletes. I mean, you know, I'm not big on that. You, Chestnut, are not an athlete. Give me a break. Let me tell you something else. Peter King is a professional. You, Joey Chestnut, are a slob. And if I sound narrow-minded on... No, I'm not narrow-minded. I'm telling it like it is. That's the absolute... Give me a break. You're an athlete. It's insanity. Ugh. By the way, touching upon something that I, I wanted to hear, uh, we're talking a little bit about the XFL, and I was not able to keep, I, I record, I erased uh, the archives of the show, so I want to be able to archive this to say this. The XFL has been making some uh, noise lately, uh, they've been holding tryouts and the like, and two of the interesting rules changes they've come up with, one, and I am intrigued by these XFL rule changes. I think they're a hell of a lot better than what they were talking about in the Alliance of American Football. You know what I mean? We're going to get rid of the extra point. Why? You're getting rid of strategy. The two things they've got. The first 25-second clock between plays. I think that's good. 
I think that's real good. And whatever happened to the 25-second clock in college football? I mean, it's kind of refreshing that, you know, two minutes left, no timeouts left. You, you know, maybe you got to force the other team to punt if you can hold them three and out. You know, that sort of thing. Can't do that now, modern-day football. But the XFL do that. That's a rule change I like. They're also coming up with an overtime rule. I'm not big on overtime. You know, I've said this a million times, and I'm going to bore you again if you haven't heard it. But if you haven't heard it, just do this. Marky Bilson, a call to end co overtime in college football. Put that in your Google. Okay, Marky Bilson overtime or something like that. M-A-R-K-Y-B-I-L-L-S-O-N. Uh, I wrote a story a few years ago for Saturday Down South, and it'll just explain my feelings on what why I hate football overtime. I think it's a gimmick. Nowhere is it more of a gimmick than in high school and college football or field position isn't earned. They're not going to let you earn field position, allegedly, in the overtime of the XFL, the new XFL, but I kind of like this idea because I think there's more strategy to it. And the idea is put the ball at the five. Yeah, I'm rerunning what I said yesterday. What the, it, 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 worth, It's worth repeating. Put the ball at the five, have him run five plays. Do it both ways. Whoever scores the most points wins. Now, I guess there's a possibility for what? Uh, if you score a touchdown on all the plays, would you get a conversion? It's a question I asked. Would you get a conversion? But I thought about this and I said, you know what? It's a chip shot field goal. I'm not sure that I wouldn't just go out there if I was in overtime first and kick five field goals. Because you're talking about fourth and five without a whole lot of real estate to operate. I mean, you can't throw a long... You don't, you, you don't have to keep the safeties back to guard against a long pass when a ball is at the five-yard line. And you're saying, if I can stop you on three of five downs then you know what? I'll win the game if I kick a field goal all the time. Now, admittedly, I mean, if let's say you were to uh, score a touchdown in your first two tries, you know, all you'd have to do then is bring out the field goal unit and you could win the game that way. But, I mean, there's a legitimate, hmm, what should we do strategy here? And like I said, I mean, if you kick the field goal, you know, by 15 points... Now, I still don't like, I think the NFL, if you got to have overtime, they do it better than anybody. There's still field position in the game. They've now made it where there's 10 minutes uh, left, so it's uh, quick hitting, and, you know, you had situations. Look at the Brown Steelers tie this past year where uh, it was a very competitive minute, and just basically because of a muddy field and the kickers couldn't uh, work on it, it, that's why it ended in a tie. I'd rather have that work that way than I would have it work uh, where there is no real strategic element. Or it becomes, you know, there's still the chance of this becoming a glorified field goal kicking contest, but at least the XFL, you know, they're thinking a little something out of the box, you know? And they're thinking about a way to improve strategy. I like the idea that when Vince McMahon talked about this, they said, would, if we were inventing football today, would we have a uh, halftime? I thought that was great. You want to know one of the things that I think kills hockey, it's got two half times. It's got the two intermissions. Resurface the ice. I do think that that hurts hockey. It does. Even myself, a hockey fan, sometimes I get bored with that. But, uh, yeah. I can see this. So I want to give that credit. I'll talk a little bit more football there. Uh, might have a 20-man Hall of Fame uh, class, and I'll talk a little bit about that later on in the program. But first, Jerry Bonkowski is going to join me. He's going to come up. They've got a race. It'll be the last race of the July 4th weekend in Daytona. And we're going to talk about that when Tri-City Sports Now returns after this. 1420 to